What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with the first edition of MLB Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks for the 2024 MLB season. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. My friends, the MLB season. Baseball is back, baby. We are starting off with the Dodgers and the Padres over in Korea. Now, I know they did this series last season in Japan, but we didn't necessarily cover that at the get-go. Wasn't... I don't know. It was just strange to have this show up and then spring training take off again. And then the regular season show up. You know what? Last season was so profitable in the MLB season. That was redundant. During the MLB season, we smashed. That's what I'm getting down to, friends. It was a phenomenal time. And if you enjoyed it too, you reap the benefits. It was fantastic stuff. And well, as such, I wanted to cover these games. I wanted to break down what we're looking at in terms of the stadium. Wanted to break down the pitching matchups. Wanted to get a jump start on my MLB process. Figured you'd probably enjoy that here too. And might as well make a video about it. We'll talk a little bit MGM there in the midway point. But I've got a lean, like, and lock for you from this baseball game here. We got game one between the Dodgers and Padres. We've got Tyler Glass now versus you, Darvish. Very excited to be breaking this down for you. But uh, again, this is just going to be something where the leans are things I'm thinking about betting. Talk about why I haven't bet them yet. Because again, I think there's a little bit of negative correlation between the place that I'm the most interested in. Usually those are going to be props because they're the things that I absolutely smash. The like, those are half units to a unit. Generally speaking, when there's more than one game, obviously that's going to be a hard and fast roll where it's almost always going to be a half unit within the MLB season. So many more bets, so many more opportunities to get money on MLB than any other sport that exists, period. Now, anything with an edge, we want to be betting. That's what we learn over at Odd Shopper. But at the same time, there are 15, 16 games a lot of the days throughout the MLB season. Manage your bankroll accordingly. Be smart. Don't just mismanage expectations and jam every single home run prop that I talk about, even though those were the most profitable uh, bets that I had from last season. Now, the locks, those are generally a unit or more. Again, this is just kind of the process that I came up with because it always drives me nuts. People just don't give you context for how much they're putting on it or why they should be putting that much on it, how much of their bankrollers should be allocating for, for specific plays. Again, these are the kind of things that matter when it comes to being a profitable better. I want to help you with that. I want to smash this MLB season once again with you. And with that, friends, let's get to a producer Jacobs on hand. I know he's excited again. 294,376 days in a row that we're going to be breaking down MLB, or at least that's what it feels like from time to time. Producer Jacob, for the first time this season, let's get to the picks. My friends, my friends, the Dodgers taking on the San Diego Padres. And I'm going to start with this because obviously there's no home road team. Obviously, they're going to flip flop. But the two game set that we have before us here in South Korea, we're going to go Chuck Sky Dome. That is the stadium that we are playing baseball in. A lot of my process for this show was breaking down what the park dimensions are going to play like. I don't know. There's a lot of places where you can speculate what it's going to play like. But I went into the KBO, the Korean baseball. Again, it is phenomenal. This league is one of the top leagues that is not MLB in the entire country. Well, in the entire world. That's what I'm getting at. The entire world. The not just the country. It is the best league in the country, no doubt about it. But you've seen a lot of Major League Baseball players come over here as they start to wind down their careers. You see a lot of players who get upgraded from the KBO and find a home in the Major Leagues. This is a phenomenal ballpark. This is going to be a phenomenal environment. Starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time, so uh, set your alarms. It's going to be lovely. 3 p.m. or Sorry, 3 a.m. out of here. Yeah, it's going to be lovely. But anywho, Dodgers, they are rightful favorites. There's no doubt about that. Tyler Glass now taking on you, Darvish. Look at what they did this offseason. Shohei Otani, does he need an introduction? Do I do I need to break this down? 10 years, $700 million. And the Dodgers did some things with his contract so that they could add even more weapons to the fray. And who are these weapons? Well, there's one in particular in terms of this lineup that I am very interested to see how he breaks down this season. Now, Shohei Otani leads everybody on this team in terms of hard hit. Led this team in homers. He is a two-time MVP, reigning MVP in the AL. Heading over to the NL, this is going to be very, very fun. Driving up north the 5 freeway in Los Angeles. Welcome, Shohei Otani. But Teoscar Hernandez is the wild card, I think, of this entire Dodgers team. He has a 49.4% hard hit percentage from last season, but about a 40-point difference in batting average between lefties and righties. 
as well as a WRC plus madness. So again, weighted runs created. We're talking about 100 being a baseline. We're looking for guys who are above that level against certain handedness. And then the guys who are sitting in the 60, 70 range, they aren't long for the major leagues or they turn into platoon guys. I think Teoscar is good enough where he's going to be an everyday starter for this baseball team. Again, one year, 20 million on his deal. There's no doubt that they want him to be that exceptional piece. But Teoscar Hernandez, 49.4% hard hit percentage, 476 expected slugging. Yes, you get the strikeouts to come with at 31.1% K rate, but in the year of our Lord, 2024 especially, strikeouts don't matter nearly the way that they might have 10 years ago. People are not that concerned with a 30, 31% K rate. Now, you had Teoscar Hernandez, Mookie Betts, who's going to be batting uh, leadoff here for this baseball team, as well as Will Smith. Those are going to be your three righties mixed along Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, and Max Muncie as your lefties. Insane at the top of this order. Now, Gavin Lux did have the Chuck Knobloch, the, the, the little yippies, the word we don't really want to talk about during the preseason. We shall see here if spring training correlates over here to KBO, if they even want to be playing him out there at second base. But we know everyday shortstop, going to be Mookie Betts. He will not be playing outfield to start off the season because of how Gavin Lux struggled over the course of that season. think that that might add a little bit of uncertainty to how I how I view this game in general. People getting adjusted. I don't think, you know, minus 205 right out the gate is going to be something that I'm that interested in. But before we get to the lean, let's break down the San Diego Padres as well. Fernando Tatis, looking for a bigger season coming off of last season. I do expect much better things from him. Took his offseason very seriously. Was working out with a bunch of, again, he's a professional athlete. It's like, oh, yeah. but last season, he had the steroid incident. Came in cold halfway through the season or like, not halfway, but like 60 games. He had a number of games left on that suspension correlated from last season into last season. Oh, two years ago into last season. There we go. That's the way I thought about it. Manny Machado, got to have a big year from him. But some interesting, interesting pieces. Brett Sullivan, Luis Cupasano, and Kyle Agashioka. Those are your three catchers. They're going to play a big difference. And they play so different defensively amongst the three of them. I think Agashioka ends up being the best bat and glove that they're going to end up having there. Although Camposano had an amazing end of last season. Very curious how San Diego decides to play their catchers just from the get-go. You have Xander Bogarts, didn't have a great season last season. We'll see how he ends up working at second base. Shortstop, probably not going to be long for that because Hey Seong Kim going to be your everyday shortstop. Going to be the beloved man heading there into Korea for sure. Jake Cronenworth needs to have a bigger year. San Diego, very disappointment. Ugai Rosario, we'll see how he ends up fitting into the complexion of things at third base. Splitting time, maybe like 10, 15% of the time instead of Manny Machado. Could be DHing. We'll see how things pan out. But overall, not the greatest lineup in the entire universe outside of, of course, the Tatis Machado 1-2. Good, great, grand. Let's get to the bets here and let's break down some pitchers, shall we? My first play, well, it's not a play at the moment. Something I'm thinking about is the Dodgers on the run line. Now, you're going to a run line. If it's your first time betting baseball, you are laying one and a half runs on the team that you are favorited. So a money line favorite here, minus 205. The Dodgers are at open, minus 187. You're looking at this team having to win by two or more to get paid. If they win by one, you would lose that bet. Now, a lot of times you're going to see massive drastic movements into like the plus money territory. Not so much here, not like a plus 130, plus 120 that you would really want to be getting here on the Dodgers. Now, this ballpark overall, as I broke down everything here, Gauchioke Sky Dome, I think it plays up ever so slightly for home runs based on KBO batting uh, batted ball data. And I think runs might be up a little bit here as well. And as such... You would kind of lean towards that number, but it seems as though the books just slashed it and said, you know what? I know the Dodgers are going to be backed by everybody. They are World Series favorites for a reason. I don't really feel like laying the chalk right from the get-go first bet of the season. So Los Angeles, I do think Tyler Glass now, the rightful favorite here last season, 218 expected batting average, 33.4% K rate. Looks like the velocity is right there, right from the get-go. This preseason has the four-seamer slider curve. I'm just a little bit worried about the barrel percentage, and I'm a little bit worried about some of the other metrics. And then you, Darvish, on the other side, just feels like I'm going to be staying away from this bet entirely. Now, let's talk about you, Darvish, here. You, Darvish, 38.2% hard hit percentage last season, 302 ex uh, ex-woba, and just a 6.8% barrel percentage. 
He's not the guy that you want to be facing here for the Dodgers. Now, once upon a time, he ruined a game seven in a Dodger uniform against the Boston Red Sox, I believe it was. Was it? Or no, it was Houston. It's against Houston. Again, just thinking off the top of my head. But anywho, you Darvish ends up having a blow up first inning. They didn't start Clayton Kershaw. It's a whole thing. I know the Dodgers probably out for blood. Guess what? You Darvish is a pretty good dude. We saw him have a decent enough season last year. I think he backs it up. Yet again, this year, going to be the number two arm in this rotation. Well, no, he's the ace of the rotation here at the moment. We'll see. There's some other pieces that I do want to break down. We'll, we'll save that for game two. I'm very excited for game two of this one with the, uh, well, Yamamoto is going to be awesome to break down. But Tyler Glass now, the rightful favorite here. Just think the line is pretty darn efficient. Let's get to the like, friends. If you've seen my program before, you know, friends. Fernando Tatis, I like my home runs going to be pretty clear cut i think on this one just brought it up on the get-go tyler glass now 11.6 percent barrel percentage that is a gigantic number for somebody who has elite stuff in a 33.4 percent k percentage now the 44.6 percent hard hit percentage kind of goes hand in hand with a little bit of that barrel percentage but what it speaks to is that when batters get a hold of his fastball they take it on a ride and you look at some of these specific splits that you get from him he was lights out against righties. There's no doubt about it. Only four home runs that he gave up in 21 games yesterday against, or yesterday, last season against righties. But here is the main difference maker for me, the price. Price is king when it comes to home run plays. If Fernando Tatis was plus 250, we wouldn't even remotely entertain this bet. Guess what? He's plus 475, and I don't think starters are going to be very long for either one of these games. Glass now, Darvish, pitch counts early in the season, still in the middle of spring training. Go to your bullpens. Only two games set. These games matter. I think you're going to have quick hooks to the bullpens if things don't go perfectly. And as such, looking at the Los Angeles Dodgers, I think this is where you want to take advantage of them with a price like this for a hitter like Fernando Tatis, who again, had a 114.6 mile per hour home run two days ago out there in Korea, hitting the ball ridiculously hard through, throughout spring training. So Fernando Tatis had a nearly plus 500 price tag. Every single time you see something like this in a neutral dome type ballpark, you take it and you don't really ask twice. Now, this is a quarter unit play. Again, looking to try to win a little bit more than a unit. Don't get crazy here when I talk about the home runs. Again, unit, that's going to be something you can save for the locks. Or if there's a home run that's just completely mispriced, if you have the bankroll, awesome. But again, depending on what your unit size is, more than happy to put a little on. Fernando Tatis, my first home run play. Can he, can he come through for us? That'd be really fun, wouldn't it? You know what else be fun? Checking out Odd Chopper for a dollar. Let's talk about that now. Friends, first week of OS Premium. Yes, it's March Madness. Yes, I'm talking MLB. Wild to be talking MLB here at the moment. Uh, my brain is still not comprehending this, but use code MADNESS down at the link below. You get your first week of OS Premium for just a dollar. That's phenomenal stuff. You know what also is? BetMGM! Hey! hey. BetMGM, an amazing deal down below, friends. First bet safety net up to $1,500. Get your bonus bets. If your first bet loses, again, want to just throw these in here quickly for you. If you want to get a little bit of extra bankroll rock in here for the beginning of MLB season for the NCAA tournament, check out BetMGM if you haven't signed up for it at the state below that you are in. It's only if you're 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. So check out Madness over at OS. Check out BetMGM to the lock we go. All right, my friends, we broke down a lot, a lot. Through a lot of information, a lot of batters, you're like, oh, my brain can't comprehend MLBB. It's okay. It's okay. I have a lock. I have a full unit lock for you right here. This is going to be the first like full send bet that we have here of the MLB season. And I'm very excited about it. I'm a little bit surprised to see this kind of a number here that we're getting on one Tyler Glass now. Tyler Glass now, if you remember last season, there was an over that we took on his strikeout props in the in the postseason. He smashed for us. Absolute evisceration. First game back in a while, had his Tommy John, came in a little bit late towards the end of last season. Absolute steamroller. Beautiful stuff. Cashed in the bets. Felt really good about it. We're going to do a little bit of the uh, opposite game here, going up against San Diego. Now, San Diego, notoriously, notoriously, 
a team that doesn't strike out a ton. Now, does that matter if you're getting hit with 98 and then a slider that's breaking off the face of the earth with about the same arm angle like Tyler Glass now has? 6'8", Southern California native Tyler Glass now? No, it's not going to matter that much. But I got to at least work through this because... Yugi Rosario, if he does not make this lineup, and if Agashioka is going to be batting ninth like I expect him to, you've got Jose Azucar, the highest K rate from last season at 23.5%, which is much lower against righties. I am just not seeing a ton of strikeouts, and I'm not seeing a lot of depth here for Tyler Glass now in this baseball game. I'm projecting him rate around 75 pitches. Again, you're going to see a quick hook on just two we're talking two games where they can utilize the entire bullpen and then they go back to spring training before opening day. They're going to unload the bullpens in this kind of a spot. I would be shocked if Tyler Glass now got out of the fifth. I would be absolutely floored and shocked. That is 15 strikeout opportunities if you just say that he plays them completely clean. They have six and a half as his opening number here. And I cannot tell you how much I like less on this one specifically. Tyler Glass now, yes mows down right-handed batters super low whip super great against all of these righties you're gonna get cam switch hitter you're gonna get cronenworth you're gonna get pro far and yeah xander bogarts not great last season only a 16.5 percent k rate fernando tatisa down year by his standards 22.2 percent k rate this is absurd manny machado never been somebody who strikes out at a high clip so overall friends the best bet to get your mlb season going is the under on Tyler Glass now, six and a half strikeouts, lock it up here, sitting at minus 138 over at FanDuel as of recording this right now. Check it out. Good stuff. Again, Fernando Tatis, home run. We like it. Plus 475, plus 425, I think, is the best available number here at the moment. And Tyler Glass now, under six and a half, minus 138 as of recording. Lock it up. I'll see you back here for game two. And that does it for the very first edition of MLV Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite play, favorite bet, favorite anything that I gave you from last season. Again, it was an awesome MLB postseason. It was an awesome MLB season in general. The home runs were flying off the chain. I mean, there are just so many guys. I mean, for me, Olivares, I'm going to remember for a long time. A couple of those plus 750 jacks that we got in Kansas City in the heat, the humidity. Oh, it's going to be cold to start off this baseball season. End of March, beginning April. Going to be tough to look at the home run market right from the get-go, but it'll warm up, friends. That is for sure. Like these domes, I will say, that's going to make it a little bit easier. And I like better than plus 400 on Fernando Tatis just about any time. So sign up for that uh, down below, BetMGM. You got uh, great stuff going in Odd Shopper, promo code MADNESS. Again, hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully this got you excited, as excited as I am for the 2024 MLB season. Thank you, producer Jacob. Uh, let's get ourselves the heck up out of here. I'll see you back here uh, for game two Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, uh, 3 a.m. It's going to be a fun one. Check out playback maybe too. Maybe fire up a stream. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Wednesday, early, early in the morning. Kegs and eggs. Let's go.